All righty. We are being recorded. Oh, so you got some good basil Hades. I've got the Buffalo Trace. So <laughs> since this is our first podcast, we have to let everyone know this is NSFW, not safe for work, not safe for children. Uh, well, it depends. Might be some cursing, might not. Might piss some people off, might not. So let's pick a meme and roll with it. What we're going to do is I'm going to let the guest, which is you, pick a meme. And we're going to discuss it for about uh, 20, 25 minutes. And if we've got enough time, we'll do another one. Okay. So if there's cursing, if there's anything, I hope you're not offended. You're probably good. Not. The people that's listening, I really don't care. I'm not making money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. What do you want to go with? You know, so I got to say, sport karate memes. I got to give uh, hats off to you. You started a meme, a, a conversation, if you would, um, about a week ago. <clears throat> and I said, you know, I have, I see both sides on this. And someone jumped in and they said, well, what's your side for it? And I knew, you know, I was busy. I was teaching class. I was like, hey, I, you know, be happy to do a podcast. And, you know, in fact, I watched one today with Bill Maher and Kid Rock. It was pretty fucking good, actually. It was a pretty good podcast. Um, and I says, you know what? Let's do it. I said, but we need to do a podcast. And I said to you, I said, you know what? Sport Karate memes, you set it up and we'll do it. And sure enough, man, you, you, you did it. I'm impressed. So I was like, I'm here, you know? <laughs> So what are we rolling with? Let's start it off. So I think it was a conversation you started was should promoters judge at their own tournaments? I'm going to go with no. So, so I think in the purest sense of the word, a pure answer would be you're correct. But however, we all know that ain't the way society is. Um, I will say I do, I run EMAC, you know, we're a small little circuit in Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, we're definitely not the big boys and, you know, we enjoy doing our six, eight tournaments a year. Um, I always get bitching and complaining at tournaments, right? Everybody does. The big boys do and the little guys do. It, it's every sport. Every sport, well said. In fact, I'm a huge jock and as a matter of fact, with NFL and stuff, with instant replay and all that stuff, they still don't get the calls right half the time. Right. And they're paid millions of dollars. So as a promoter, that means I get all the credit and I get all the blame. Right. Fine. I know that I'm a big boy. So be it. However, let's say it's continuous sparring. And let's say I got some referees that aren't comfortable maybe doing that. Or maybe they're good at everything else, but maybe that's not their forte. Right. I would much rather me be up there doing it because if I'm going to take the, the blame anyway, let me get out there and at least try to fix the problem. You know? So while I agree with you saying, in essence, if everybody was well-trained and well-paid and we were a bigger sport and was doing the right way, I mean, you're right. You wouldn't have the owner of the Dallas Cowboys referee in the game. True. I get that. But if it's my show and my neck is on the chopping block, I'm going to hear all the complaining anyway, and I'm still, I think, a pretty good referee, um, then, you know, I'd rather be out there and fix the problem before it becomes a problem, if that makes sense. So, yes. But then – that opens up a whole nother can of worms because you want the fighting judges judging fighting. You want the forums got judges doing forms. You, you really need specialized judges. You really do. You know, you need somebody that understands creative, the extreme. I honestly don't. I used to, but now with all the fancy tricks and everything, I, I couldn't do it. And I, I could say that I'm more to judge traditional forms and fighting. But when you get the promoters judging, especially tournament promoters at the national level, and then you start having other promoters and team owners, well, I don't want him judging. I want him removed. I want her removed. You could have two or three divisions in a row pulling people off and wanting to put in their own judges because you know they're going to give a favorable score to their kids. And it happens all the time. Amen. All the time. Amen. And nobody bats an eye. Amen. You're 100% right. I think. So you're 100% right, and I've been in the game a minute as well. And I, But I'll tell you this, though. Here's what I think. Number one, we're a recreational activity, right? So if people – you know, how do you judge? People judge with their pocketbooks, right? That's how they vote with their pocketbooks, right? You know, it's the economy, stupid. 
And what I'm saying with that is, let's say that you're going to tournaments and the judges suck, fine. So let's say the promoters, let's say it's a small circuit, right? I don't know back in the day in my region, you know, you would have like the promoters would judge like the black belts. And I kind of like that because then the buck stops with somebody finally, right? And then let's say they screw it up too or they're, or they're uh, 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 biased, you know, fine. Then you know what? I will take my money and I'll vote somewhere else. I'll pay it somewhere else. I won't come back. Well, that's, that's voter's choice, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, yeah. And, and we always preach. They'll, they'll come with the pocketbooks or they won't, they, they won't go to tournaments anymore. How often you see that? I remember back in the 90s and the early 2000s, I remember big teams just pulling their whole team out of tournaments whenever something wouldn't go their way. You don't see Amen. nothing like that anymore. You see bad A little bit, but not like that. Time. Well, you see bad calls all the time, and they still show up the next year. People bitch, complain, and moan, and then they still show up. And yeah. They still in the money. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And what you're saying is right. And that's where we need more competition in the sport, you know, a couple of years ago. And I, and for the record, I'm in, you know, I'm a 1A NASCA tournament. I'm not a big 6A NASCA guy at all. I'm on the very bottom. But at least back in the day, you had, you know, and even now you do have with kick, you know, circuit down in Florida. You have a little more options now. Um, and I think that helps. Um, but I will say too, though, That's it. I would rather the promoter of the tournament be the guy judging than some yo-yo who thinks he's qualified. You know, at least if the promoter's judging and it's bad, I can go right there. I'm not saying the buck stops with him. Is what I'm trying to say. Hey, and, if I cut you off for a second, I'm gonna yeah, be. Uh, yeah. I'm at the drive-through at McDonald's for the from one of my kids. But you go right ahead. Give me, give me two seconds. I'm gonna pause the recording. Go right in. All right. I think we are recording. All right, we're back at it. So, I, I, I mean, then that's especially at the smaller events. You got, you know, the judges that show up one time a year. That yeah. Is four people out their garage that show up in their uniform. That's oh, that's, okay. Good job. He's sleeping. They show up one time a year, and then they demand to be put. A lot of times, they don't even demand to be put as a center. The right. promoter will just automatically put them as a center because. Oh, yeah, this dude's got 15 freaking stripes on his belt. I've been knowing him, but he only right. shows up once or twice a year and doesn't know. That, or, worse, that, or worse yet, if I can keep going with what you're saying, what if that guy is his instructor? Yeah, I'm, I've been removed. I've been removed from rings to be placed for somebody like that to get put in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying maybe he's in that compromised position where he's like, you know, that's his sensei. And, oh, crap, I got to put him in. But, well, maybe sensei is like 10 years past his prime. As a judge, and yeah, I don't, maybe. yeah, and that's that's an ego thing. Yes, one hundred percent an ego thing. But I so, think, but, but I'll, I'll take I'll take a step further though. Yeah, let's say, and again, I haven't been to any of the big tournaments in a while, you know. But let's say I were to go to, let's say I'm a really good competitor in, in NASCAR per se, and let's say I go to the top and I'm at the Diamond Nationals. And the judges are all the six eight. Pardon me. The judges are the six eight promoters. And let's say that it is biased. Okay. All right. Cool. The buck stopped with them. Okay. Now I know. Whereas, how many times have you been to other tournaments? And and I know as a promoter, because I used to run uh, combat sports. I used to do kickboxing matches and other stuff. You could always blame it on the judges. There was always a cushion between the judges and the promoter. And you know, I could always blame it on them. Whereas, if I'm the guy there judging your continuous match between you and somebody else you know what the buck stops here you guys are unhappy with me i gotta feel the blame i can't blame it on that referee that i hired that day you know what i'm saying yeah a smaller event yeah but the bigger events there's no reason to have the big promoters judging why not you've got ample judges or ample people you could pull because like diamonds they had three judges removed or two judges removed and replaced division after division just to get their guys in that, you know, okay, I don't want him in. I want this guy in judging my people. Now that doesn't sound good. I hear what you're saying. That doesn't sound good. And it, it happens all the, all the time. Yeah. You see it all the time. The promoters right, but... around arbitrating, you know, having the rule book. And a lot of them don't know the rules as good as the parents do. I'd rather put some of the parents in there judging than some of them big promoters. Maybe you're right. Uh, now, theoretically, again, maybe I'm being naive now. 
Um, but theoretically, I know when like I'm going to call, I'm going to use Dennis Brown's name. Dennis Brown to me is an excellent judge. I'm not seeing him in a long time, but you know, whenever he was judging some of the tournaments I was at in Disney, I thought he did a great job and I knew he was very knowledgeable. I'm just saying who's above him, you know, a 20 year old who's maybe younger, you know what I'm saying? Like someone on that level, at least, you know, and I'm going back 15 years, you know, I'm sure he's still good. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying I would rather I – mean, those guys should be qualified as opposed to another second-degree black belt. And if those guys are not qualified, maybe that's what you're saying. I don't know. I'm not, and I'm not, You didn't say Dennis' name at all. I'm going to the record on that. You didn't say that. But I'm just saying if those judges are not qualified or if they're past their prime, then they shouldn't be out there anyway. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't be promoters anyway. There should be a, a, a requirements to be a promoter. I think a lot of the kids and a lot of the younger people would make excellent judges because they're active now. Yep. And they know the rules. They know what's going on. You, you know, you got a lot of the older guys, especially judging creative and extreme. I'll admit it. I can't look at it and know what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. These promoters, I know they watch it, but they still don't know what's going on a lot of the times. Well, or worse yet, maybe they don't like it. Yeah. Like you do have some promoters, and I would imagine on that level, that is not the case, but again, maybe I'm being the one naive here. Um, but I would think though that, you know, I know on some levels promoters that I've seen, they don't like the creative stuff. So they're going to judge you down because it's not, it's not their cup of tea. They'll judge it down. I mean, the same thing with Korean and Jap. Yeah. You have Chinese. You've got, yeah. I mean, I'm not very good at Chinese. I've done Kimpo, but yeah. I'm a Korean guy. Yeah. Same here. I, I look at Korean and Japanese. I look at, let's just take, for example, Moon Moo, because that's the hot topic. And it's so freaking difficult. You've got so much leg control involved compared to, I don't know, Kosakun or something like that. Well, Moon yeah. Moo 61 moves. That's a fourth degree form. I came, I did that form too, by the way. Um, you compare that to what, Sam Neal, I think it is. I think it is. Or yeah, it's only got 33 moves. But anyway, yeah. All right, so you're going to go, uh, what's the hot form? Oh, Honda I or Anand. That's right. Right Compare it to Moon Moo for Grands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the Korean form because it's more difficult. Right. The judges won't, other judges won't see it that way because they've got a Japanese bias. Yeah. Like, that's what everybody, that's the hot thing, been winning, and it's going to keep winning. But then when you have a good Korean form that's not Korea or Quebec, they're going to look at that and it's not seen often and they're not going to score it as good, even though it's more freaking difficult. You need to well, try doing Juche. It's even harder. Right. You do Juche, you go here, you throw the side kick, got the 180 in the air, and then you have to hook kick it, not to mention a split kick as well in the air. Juche is the hardest ITF form I would say they have. For, for the record, if Jeff is listening, I would love to see that at the next event. <laughs> Right. Because I know damn well I can't do it. I can't kick above my waist right now after my hip surgery. <laughs> you know, I've ran that form do chad I've ran them all. You know, I had to do it for my one of my six my six degree tests. I had to run Chunji to Tongil. And um, yeah, but it's been a minute and uh, I would love to see it. But I think that's the problem. I think the Japanese forms were so good at what they do. The Chinese forms are beautiful, totally different animal. And the Korean form, especially the ITFers, we had kind of caught right in the middle there. You know, well, not not only with that, we let's let's hop off the judges thing for a little bit and go on to something else because that's beating a dead horse at this point. So you've got everybody sees the Japanese forms. You know how many Jap people that's running Japanese forms or Korean stylists that just either run it, learn it off of YouTube hmm. or maybe bring somebody in for private lessons once in a while. Not mm -hmm. throwing no shade there, but when I see somebody's belt at a tournament with Korean font on it, and they're running a Japanese form. It kind of makes me go, hmm, because yeah. they know that the Japanese form is going to win over the Korean form, especially a lot of the Tong Sudo people like myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's very somewhat easy to trans to transfer over. Yep, not the same form, close to it, where you can make the transition over, but they won't run it because there's that implied bias that the Japanese form is better. Correct. Yeah, I would say you're right on that. Um, I remember back in the day, 
I have friends of mine that still kind of do that. Um, but let's face it, though. I mean, I'm an ITFer. I hate to say it, but you look at the ITF forms, and you look at the Shotokan forms, they were definitely up to a black belt ripped from the Shotokan forms. Oh, yeah. It, uh, they all are. Yeah. When I, now, post when black I belt, to... General Che changed that. He got it better. But under black belt, man, you watch them, they're like, oh, man. <laughs> you know? When, uh, when I was coming up in uh, WTSDA, there's this thing, and I, I make fun of it all the time. It says, Tungsudo is over 2,000 years old, and it's derived off of these other things. And then I started learning the Shotokan, and I'm like, man, man, somebody freaking lied to me coming yeah. up. What kind of goddamn Korean propaganda is this? Mm -hmm. so tell me this. Well, you look at, and I'm a Korean stylist, so I got to defend the homeland. However, um, and Grant, I, I mean, I do other arts too, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, other arts, but. Um, However, you look at a lot of the Korean arts, you know, Aikido, Hapkido, Judo, Yudo, Kendo, Kumdo. I mean, you go down the list, it's like, uh, okay, you know. Although Hapkido and Aikido are vastly different now. Uh, but in the beginning, when it was Aikido and uh, Choi Sul, I think is what it was called, the original Hapkido name, um, yeah, it was a little different. I mean, it was more Aikido based. Yeah, the Hapkido I see now is more like, I'm going to wrist lock you and there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. Yeah, much more like Cooksell one, really. Very similar to Cooksell. Yeah. And, and while we're on this thing, this topic, I just want to throw it out there that, especially on the forum, while we're on the forums kick, that the Nazca traditional weapons, sorry, your bow form is fucking creative. <laughs> You know, yeah, in fact, with EMAC, and again, we're a little bitty thing, but with EMAC, we're talking about bringing that extreme divisions back. I've had enough schools ask about it from a business standpoint. It's probably smart for us to do. Okay, fine. I'm thinking about making one of the rules, though. It's got to be A, the music, and maybe B, there's got to be some acrobats in it. You know, there's got to be some releases, some gymnastics. If not, go to the open traditional slash open division. So watching, <laughs> watching on Instagram and everything, and the TikTok, I love the TikTok. It's my new favorite thing. I'll stay up for hours with it. When, uh-oh, when, I thought you spilled it, baby. When watching the traditional weapons, mostly bow, I, I'm no denying the kids' skill with it, or the adults now, super skilled with the bow, but the form is still not traditional. But per the damn NASCAR rules, it is. And people will go to defend them hell or high water and I don't blame them because it's what they do. Right. And it may or may not be their student or it may or may not be their league, but it is creative light. It is not traditional. Per the rules, yes, it is, but we all know it's a it's a creative form. You're jumping around on one foot, doing all kinds of spins and swings. The only thing you're not doing is releasing the damn weapon. You're doing a creative form in a white uniform right. with no releases. I think that maybe the rule book um, again, I'm not an expert in the NASCA rule book, you know, but, um, I, and again, I'm just a 1A promoter, so I get that luxury to do what I want more with it. <laughs> if I was a 3A, then I'd have to be, um, you know, but I think the rule book needs to be updated with that. But I think really, again, there needs to be some releases and there probably needs to be some gymnastics. It needs to be an aerial of some kind. If you're going to do extreme, it needs to be some aerial. The, the, the rule book does need to be updated and everybody beats on the horse every year between that adding in you know, creative and extreme, the head below the waist thing, the different tricks they could do. And, you know, there's always arbitration. Well, this trick was extreme, extreme. Oh, no. Yeah. But his head didn't go. You know, he didn't invert. Oh, there's that fine line of it. The rules need yeah. to be updated, but the promoters never do it. Just like with the two point body kick. There's always a promoter or two that sticks around and fucking defends all that nonsense. And it sticks around even though you have players and competitors speaking out against it all the time. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about a two-point body kick. You want to talk about that? Yeah. I'm in favor of it. Branson's apparent favorite thing, looking at something earlier. I'm in favor of it. Go away, you're wrong. <laughs> Here's why I'm in favor of it. And we're going to talk about ring entrances in a minute, too. Um, so back to what we said we started this conversation off with judging and here's the problem 
A, here's the problem with judges, okay? And again, I had, I got the judge at the Battle of Atlanta recently. Okay, boy, that's that's a you know, big event. You know, Greg does a great job. But judges, A, it's hard enough to get them to show up. B, it's hard enough to train them. Then you want them to judge what? Traditional weapon, traditional form, point karate, continuous karate, grappling, extreme, mild extreme, chambra, sock fighting. I mean, anything else you want us to throw in there? It's a lot of shit, right? And you got to keep judging fucking simple. So that's one thing I liked about the Japanese for a minute. Everything you remember for a minute, everything was one point. Be it a hand, a kick, or a tornado kick, or an inversion, you know, uh, spinning heel kick, jump spin. It was Everything was one point. So whatever you do, I think it's got to be simple. That's my point. Actually, NBL had it right. I know people don't like hearing that. NBL had it right. Go ahead. At the perfect amount of... Let's reward the fanciness, but keeping it simple. It's really not – sparring is not complicated. Punch Shouldn't kick. Be. If I run into you and I run into a bit leg side kick, there's no reason that should be freaking two points. I got no problem with it. To me, it's simpler. I'm just saying whatever you do, make it consistent. You know, and to me, it's simple. If it's a kick, it's two points. If it's a hand, it's one. Now, if we can't agree on that, cool. Then make everything one point. Everything one point. It, yeah, Easy. I'd be cool with that. Or two point head kicks if they want to throw a point for, for, for two. No, no, they could, could, you could argue because advantage us Korean guys, you know, Korean stylists. Um, I see that on Facebook all the time. And then okay. the rebuttal is that I'm just going to, I want to dick kick because I can't kick in the head. Right. Well, it's that's a good, really different. It's a good point. I just think, again, I'm cool with everything being, to me, if you're going to do kick, make it two, hand, make it one, done. Um, if not, make everything one. Now, to your point with NBL in the rule book, they had three options or two options. Everything was one point. Then they had like a two and a one. And then they had, the, but they had options A, B, and C for scoring options that the local promoter could decide what he or she wants to do. Yep. Three point spin to the head, three point jump spin, three point jump spin to the body, two point spin to the yeah. body, two point spin to the head, all that good stuff. It's really not complicated. People just make it complicated and are they're stupid. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Uh, obviously, everyone's got their opinion. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I Again, I think I know it depends where your judge is coming from. I'm just saying it's a lot more than to keep up with. I think we would both agree that if everything was one point, any judge could figure out how to judge sparring in two minutes. If everything was one point. Also, you know, bit you, kick should not be a point unless I'm stopping you and curling you over. Say that again now? Because Bit leg kicks, curl kicks, donkey kicks. If your leg is bent and not extended, that shouldn't be a point. So I disagree on that too. And here's why. Um, from a pure technique standpoint, you're probably right. But what are we doing? We're playing point karate. We're playing tag. If and just like I'm cool with a with a jab to the body. If I'm if you're you know, I'm not gonna say you're dumb, but if you're dumb enough to let me, you know, uh, lunge down, lower down, and throw a body jab and you don't give me an axe kick or a hook kick to the head or even a fist slap back fist to the head, I deserve my point. So to me, it's point sparring. And again, yeah, I, remember I used to put on cage fights. So when I watch point karate, I'm like, okay, and I love it. It's a game of tag, but it's a game of tag. So whether you're, you're whether you read chamber or punch, I don't care. There needs to be a level of contact with it, though, not just flick the wrist at your stomach. Uh, well, well, now we could now that we could talk about. If you're talking about how it has to be maybe moderate contact instead of light contact. Now that you could you get my opinion. Now you go more into combat sports. You know, you're going into more, you know, fighting. And you could say more continuous fighting. But, but you got to remember, it's a game. Knockouts. I'm sorry. I said, but then you can't have the knockouts. You can bring the contact up, but you can't sure. have the knockouts. I, I agree with you on that. Now, let's face it, the adult black belt division, that may or may not be agreed on. <laughs> but I think in the junior division, it needs to be lighter lighter contact, yes, more control. I would agree. It needs to be a sport. At the end of the day, it needs to be a sport. It can't be a combat sport unless we're going to go into that realm, like ISKA, IKF, WKA. If we're going to go into combat sports, only then that's, that's a different pair of pants. Right. And and there's no there's no unified rules with nothing. You know, you go to NASCAR and you have the kids dressed up as a damn Michelin man. You go to a little local event, you got somebody with just gloves and a helmet and they just bring in the smoke to everybody. 
Yeah. It, it, it needs to be some kind of baseline with it. I mean, you play basketball, basketball rules are pretty much the same everywhere. You play baseball, baseball rules are, eh, depends. You know, you got slow pitch and all that shit. Yeah, but. Every yeah. other major sport has some kind of unified rules except us. Because you have this dude fucking teaching out of his garage. It's like, nah, I ain't bringing my kids to the tournament if I can't kick them in the dick and the balls because True. that's not going to work on the streets. True. Well, yeah, you're right on that point. And I'm a, I'm a provost, you know what I'm saying? And we don't do, you know, we don't do yeah, the sports stuff. The ball kicks. Yeah, yeah, they're all about the ball kick, yeah. Um, but, no, you're right. You're 100% right, um, you know, on that part of it. I, I completely agree. Um, but, yeah, I, I think here's the problem. I think when you compare – I compare us a lot to our grappling friends, right? I go to a lot of the IBJJF tournaments. Uh, I'm not sorry, the Fuji BJJ tournaments. My friend Tim Morthland owns that circuit. Shout out to Tim. Does a wonderful job. And if you notice, they're growing, and they're consistent, and it is what it is. But did you, um, see how, you know how professional those events are? The whole some of them are very matted. professional. The whole thing's matted. You have nobody yeah. standing around the rings, and I understand people standing around the rings bring a level of energy and hype to it. Right. But you've got nobody on there. You've got your one judge. You've yep. got your timekeeper and scorekeeper, and then you've got two competitors. Nobody sitting around the ring. Indian style, waiting for their name to get called. Right. It's it's just super professional, and I, I don't see us ever getting to that level. You know, I, I think there's some kind of unification with it. There'd have to be unification, but also too, here's a problem. We we got too much shit on the menu, right? Like I went into In and Out Burger. I was in San Diego a few weeks ago, right? I go in there with some friends of mine, and we look in the menu. It's the simplest fucking menu I've ever seen in my life. Right. It's like, you know, a single, double burger, fries or milkshake. That's it. And the problem is with NASCAR, not just NASCAR, NBL too, all the sport karate guys, I'm, I'm guilty of it too, is we said, okay, yeah, you want chamber? We'll throw it on the menu. Oh, uh, we'll figure out how to judge it later. Don't worry about that. We'll take your money. Uh, you want sock grappling now, which is, I can't believe that's a thing. Cool. We'll throw it on the menu. You know, all right. You want skills competition, which we see some of the other circuits groups try to do. We'll throw it on the menu. Well, guess what? Then you're going to these judges, me included, and you're like, oh, we want you to be able to judge all that shit at a high level. But we it's all about the money. You've got uh, – Yes. What, what's AKA charging? $80 for the first division and then $60 for each one after that, I think. I, I think that's what I saw for the early registration. Talking about for grappling? For, for anything. Grappling I mean, tournaments now are 100 bucks and above. So if you, if you go to grappling – you're going to pay 100 to 130 and that's really for just gi and maybe no gi grappling. That's it. And then you've got your absolute or your open weight, whatever you want to call and it. And that now. might be extra or might be included, right? Depends on the promotion. So you go you go to Diamonds or whatever, U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. You're paying $100 for your first division. Then you're paying X amount for each division on top of that. you got creative, extreme, creative weapons, extreme weapons, traditional, traditional weapons, Japanese, Korean. Depending on how many goddamn divisions you want to do. Yep. The, and, you know, the promoters are out there saying they're not making money. I agree. As a percentage wise, you know, you poke out 60, 70 grand for an event. But right. if you're making 10, 15 percent off of that, mm -hmm. off of a one day event, of course you're going to char put all the damn divisions you can. That's more money. But that the, the drawback of that, though, is because of that it's going to be the referee is going to suffer. Yes. The quality of the product is going to suffer. Whereas if you just had a Kumite only circuit, you know, or forms only, right, whatever your, your flavor is, it's going to be better quality because the referees only got to be good at one thing. They, they need a way to train the referees, possibly. But pay you got to give us less work. Either, right, I mean, right. either, I, either, I either, either, either cycle us out or give us less shit on the dock at the ref. I, I rag on Pearl Mac a lot because I rag on everybody a lot because that's what I do, but yep. they're out there at least, you know, they've got a limited number of divisions. They're out there training judges and everybody yes. looks uniform yes. here. You know, they're all wearing the same damn thing where yep. there's a lot of other events, even the big fucking uh, nationals. You got somebody up there sparring, judging sparring the forms and shorts and a t-shirt because they needed somebody. Buddy, my buddy Dave Scalar was on that back in 07, 08, and shout out to Dave. 
Um, 100% right. I was at a grappling tournament in Orlando years ago. The guys have the referee colors on. They were all tatted up, freaking gun show and all that going on. You know, good for them. But they looked like a fucking referee, to your point. And um, you, have, you yeah. have it if you want, want it to grow. You if go you to, to softball, baseball, you know who the referees are. Well, and we got to pay the referees, too. Pay them, you know, let's say pay them a dollar a competitor, 50 cents Nothing. a competitor in division. You've got 20 competitors. Man, you just made yeah. 20 bucks. Well, that or you pay them, you know, like I think – what is this softball little league? I used to run that stuff. Program director at YMCA. I think I think they got like a hundred bucks a game or something like that. You did like a game, you got a hundred oh, bucks. Man, a game. We do, huh. we do. Uh, I think forty a game. Yeah. Okay. Down here, I mean, for you know, hour make forty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we need to get to that for the sport to grow. If they want to keep all those divisions, then we're gonna need. To- pay these referees um and some of them are i think you and i both know i think we're from the same region i think i'm, I'm not sure um but you know you gotta pay these referees man you get what you pay for you know and then on top of that too gonna, i mean i still think they have too much stuff on the dock there's still running too many divisions oh, there, there's too much and there's nobody on on the same page yep so like where i could be that in texas a lot you've got three different leagues and they all drawing huge numbers and there's no crossover with it yeah yeah, well, and, but, and until we grow it more, and it's got to start from the top. I mean, yeah, the ground level, you're right. I mean, root, grassroots is the way to go. But when you get, you know, if NBL could have made it work, if NASCA, you know, I don't know what will happen in 10 years, you know, what's their next generation for promoters. Um, you know, but it's got to start. Someone at the top has got to say, hey, we're going to invest in this sport. We're going to make a uniform. And then you need to get a big vendor like Century or Tire Claw to back it. They do back it, but they don't back it to the level that they maybe could or should. That's what I'm saying. Because that's – somebody goes to tournaments, isn't their bread and butter. It's the school owners. And you don't see a lot of school owners with multiple locations, you know, barring like like Josh Smith. I, mean, I know he has a huge tournament team in like five locations. Right. They do a lot. But you got a lot of school owners that don't. Um, you got a lot of uh, it's Tiger Rock. They have their own little inner inner league thing. ATA is the same way. Yep. Um, a lot of them, that's Century and AWMA and everybody else, Bold Look or whoever. That's who they who make their money from. Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, I run. I have right now. I have five locations. Working at number six. Um, I'm very picky about what terms we send our guys to because of bad experience, you know, ruins business. And, uh, and to your point, what we just been talking about, the promoters, they're, they're thinking short term, not long term. And um, yeah, it could be really bad. And that's why I see why. Hell, what did David Deaton back in the day? If I'm wrong, tell me, please. But what did David Deaton back in the day? He was a king of Nashville, right, for a long time. And then I think he was a NASCA four or five day guy for a minute. I mean, for a while, probably. And I heard that he dropped NASCA, decided to do his own tournaments with his own schools and still have 500 competitors. You know? So it, parents it's got to be a win-win. Don't care about the, they're going to go where the instructor tells them. Yeah. But yeah. Well, and that's they, why they I, What's that? They don't care about the – they bring their kids to have fun somewhere. They're bringing their kids to compete. They don't care what the league is. They don't care what – they might care where it's at. They care about how much it costs. But if they right. – most of them don't know NASCA from uh, PKC. My instru- your instructor says, man, we're going to um, PKC Nationals. And was it Idaho, Indiana, wherever the hell it is? They're going to go. Right. They don't care that it's not a NASCA event. Your instructor says go. Oh, yeah, we're going to go. They don't know no better. Right. But – Hate to cut this short. I think we need to continue this another day, though. <laughs> I'm always down, Spork Ronnie Memes. You let me know. All right, man. I'll uh, let's set up another date. Sounds good, brother. Have a good evening. You too. Time for more bourbon. You got it. Bye bye.